Like everyone she knows, she's holding out for true love, waiting on an answer, ready for a change. And everywhere she goes, she's just a little bit on the lookout. A day might be tomorrow. The question still remains. I know she won't see me, but I might just say anyhow. If I could be right there, right now, inside myself was told, hold tight to your heart's desire. Never ever let it go. Let nobody fool you into giving. Tend your own fire, lay low and be strong. Wait a while, wait a while, wait it on out, wait it out, let it come along. Hey everybody, welcome to MT Guitar. Thanks for joining us today. We're doing Like Everyone She Knows by James Taylor. And I did a lesson on the intro uh, a while back, which I'm gonna link in the description below. And please check that out if you're interested. Um, the intro is deserved its own lesson. It's quite complex. So in that lesson, I mentioned I would cover the rest of the song, including all the chords and all the sections. And so that's what we're gonna cover today. James Taylor has had a 50-year career, and uh, this is from the album New Moonshine in 1991. And uh, it's filled with amazing chords, including, you know, seventh chords, slash chords, and I've kind of combined the guitar and keyboards a little bit. Michael Brecker played saxophone on this recording, and Michael Brecker is a, a famous jazz saxophonist. Check out this lesson if you're interested in expanding your chord vocabulary. Um, check the description below and check out the resources I'm offering, including uh, you know Patreon and, and different things like that. And make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. So with that, let's get started on this lesson and zoom in on the hands. All right, so we have capo on second fret, which is a an important thing for James Taylor um, for the tone. A lot of songs, it wouldn't matter if you took the capo off, meaning you know you might learn a like a like an Eagles song or Tom Petty and you can take the capo off but and it won't really change things but with James Taylor it actually is important for the crisp sound that he gets so like I said the introduction is in another video which is in the description below that's this part and after that's over we, we get into the the lyrics so we're gonna cover all these chords here and uh, the first chord is going to be a B minor 7 and it's going to be 2nd fret from the 5th string on, 2nd, 4th, 2nd, 3rd, 2nd. And you're going to pinch the thumb and first three fingers, okay, like that. 5th string, thumb, and first three strings with the finger. Then we go up to a C sharp diminished, I'm sorry, C sharp 7. And again, same thing, pinch those strings. Like everyone she knows. Okay, then an F sharp minor seven. So we're, this song is filled with seventh chords. So let's do that real slow. Like everyone she knows. Okay, now we're gonna do a D, um, a D major nine actually, which is a, a beautiful chord. It's almost like an A triad over a D bass, but. Uh, we might as well just call it a D major nine. We have second and third strings, second fret, and then the fourth and first strings are open. And you know, this is a finger style lesson here, so we're gonna do the right hand, fourth and first strings together, then second and third strings. So fourth and first string together, then second, then third. 
And after you do that, you can kind of keep the rhythm because, you know, we don't have a band behind us playing this right now. So you can do a light strum with the index or you could just leave it, leave it there. Okay, now an E major and we go with the right hand, six, three, two, one, as far as the strings, six, three, two, one. So let's take it from the beginning here, B minor seven. Like everyone she knows, she's holding out for true love. Okay, then that D, D major nine repeats, same thing, E, three times, third time. On the third time, the E major, we go six, three, two, one with the strings, and then second fret, bass string, second fret, sixth string. So, and we go sixth, first three, and, the, and that becomes an E over F sharp. Or some might call it, like in the jazz world, you might call that an F, sh F sharp seven sus four. Uh, but more commonly in a lead sheet or a chord sheet for this song, you would see um, an E over F sharp, meaning an E triad over an F sharp bass. So that's E second fret, sixth string. Okay, and then back to a B minor seven, C sharp seven, just like before, F sharp minor seven, like before. Now this time, you know, this song is quite, it, it, this is more of an advanced lesson. So, you know, there's some things that make it a little more difficult, including this, uh, this bar right here is a bar of six. So here's the second time. She thinks of going home, one, two, three, four, five, six. And the keyboard is going to the fourth fret first string. So one, two, three, four, meaning the beats. One, two, three, four, and then fourth fret first string. Five, six. And you're going first, second, third strings. So let's do that from the B minor seven, second time. She thinks of going Okay, so let's take it from the very beginning because that's that's basically the verse and, and that's going to take us to the bridge. So let's take it from this first B minor 7. Like everyone she knows. D major 9. Not the true love. Second time. Not an answer. Third time. Headed for a change. E over F sharp. Repeat everything. Bar of 6. Given up on a city, maybe moving back down to Moby. Okay, now on this D major 9 here, instead of going to the E to the E to the E over F sharp, we do this little transition into the bridge. And we're gonna, like I said in the beginning, we're gonna combine the keyboard and guitar parts here to make it playable on a solo guitar. So you're gonna go up all the way to 5th fret, 1st string, 7th fret, 2nd and 3rd strings. And it's basically, you know, a D over E. So you're going to play 6th string open, and then 3rd, 2nd, 1st, and then 5th string open. See? So 6, 3, 2, 1, 5th string. So it becomes a D over A after a D over E. Pretty, pretty sophisticated chord there. Six, three, two, one, five. Okay, that takes us into the bridge. Now we have a D major seven. There's different ways to play that, but we're gonna do this in the fifth fret. So uh, it's from the fifth string on, it's fifth fret, seventh fret, sixth, seventh, fifth. And you know, you're gonna kinda just roll it, which means a fifth, third, second, first strings, kind of one after another. Okay. And after you do that, you kind of keep the rhythm with your first finger strumming. James Taylor likes to strum with the first finger because it's a light sound that's not really rambunctious with the whole the whole hand going up and down. So it's a good skill to, to work on. So I know she a little strum there for four beats. Now a C sharp minor seven. I might just say okay, same strumming pattern there down, down, up, down, kind of thing. Now a G sharp seven 
or a, a G sharp flat 13, which is uh, again a, a, a jazz chord. So it's fourth fret, skip a string, fourth fret, fifth fret, fifth fret. And you're gonna roll it. So you're gonna go six, four, three, two. So let's take it from the D major seven. I know she won't see me, C sharp minor seven, but I might just say G sharp flat 13. Pretty sweet, right? Now we're gonna go to an, um, an E flat minor seven flat five. Uh, you know, so probably, you know, probably a new chord for some of you. It's going to be 6th fret, 7th fret, 6th fret, 8th fret. I'm sorry, 6, six 7, 6, 9. Right there. And you bar the 6th fret with your first finger from the 5th string on. And you go 6, 7, 6, 9. Okay? And you roll it. And I'm just saying it. And then back to a G sharp. This time just a regular G sharp 7. Okay, so let's take it from the bridge. I know she won't see me, C sharp minor seven, but I might just here. Now the E flat. Now the G sharp. Okay, good. Now we go back to a C sharp minor seven, and we and we go down with the thumb, all five all five strings here. Zama. Okay, like that. Now an F sharp seven, F sharp dominant seven. Myself was, and then a B minor seven. So now a C sharp minor seven, not a C sharp dominant like at the beginning, but a minor seven. So as I myself was told, like that. Two frets up from a B minor seven. Now a D major seven. Hold tight, and just kind of hold it there for a while. Hold tight to your hearts so it's a whole bar without any strumming one two three and four and and now a d over e and that's going to be a d chord uh like a normal d chord here two three two with an e six string open bass to your hearts desire and the keyboard is and keyboard and guitar are kind of doing a quarter note pulse so one two Okay, so let's take it from the beginning of the bridge and get to that point. It's not that she's so sad. She always was a happy soul. E flat minor seven. G sharp, C sharp, F sharp, B minor, C sharp seven, D major seven. Tight to your. Here's the D over E, quarter note pulse. Okay, good. So you've gotten that far. That's. That's a good thing. <laughs> now we're going to go to the A chord here. And it's just a regular A chord. And then it goes back to the D over E. And again, the quarter note pulse. Let nobody fool you. Back to A, then to F sharp minor 7. Now a D major 7 again. And you could either do it like we did before, but what I recommend is actually doing a a bar of the second fret first three strings. So you play fourth string open and first three strings barring the second fret of the first three strings. And you're going to do this quarter note pulse here. So, you know, you got second fret first three strings and fourth string open. Tend your own fire and then a D over E. Lay low and be strong and then an A chord. And then a D over E again. Wait a while, quarter note pulse. And then you walk up to a G by going open six string, second fret, G, add nine. So a G add nine is a chord that James Taylor loves. It's a second fret, third string with the third string, uh, third fret, six string bass. So a beautiful chord. Most times we, we 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 encounter G with a just a regular G, but we're adding the second fret third string. And it's like six, four, three, two as far as strings. Six, four, three, twos. Let it come back to an A. Okay. Then we have a saxophone solo from M Michael Brecker, a famous jazz saxophonist. 
and we don't have time to cover that, but um, the chords during that solo section are the same chords as the verse. So B minor seven, C sharp dominant, F sharp minor, and then he just kind of solos over that verse. So you can play that verse for the solo section. So that's pretty much the song. The only thing we have left to cover is the ending. Uh, and the, the ending can be a little tricky because uh, JT, as I like to call him sometimes, tags uh, a certain amount of chords. And then what a tag means is sort of repeat a section as a way of driving it home or, or taking it, you know, taking it to the end in a way that feels not rushed. <clears throat> so uh, there's another verse and chorus. And let's take it from this, this bridge here and just get to that ending as a review. So go ahead and practice with me. We'll take it from the D major 7. I know she won't see me, but I might just say anyhow. If I could be right there right now as I myself was told. Okay, here's the D major 7. Hold tight to your heart's D over E. Coming to the A. Never ever let it go. Here's the D over E. Let nobody fool you. Back to the A. Into given it. F sharp minor 7. Here's the D major 7. Ten your own. D over E. Lay low and bis A. Okay. And then D over E. Wait a while. Wait a while. To the G at 9. Let it come A. Now, instead of the saxophone solo happening here, we're at the end. So then James goes back to the D over E. Oh, wait a while. Quarter note pulse. Back to the A. And then we have da, da, da. the saxophone goes over the B minor 7 to C sharp 7. And the final chord of the song is F sharp minor 7. Now, as a little bonus, if, you, if you're still with me here and you want to learn this little ending to, to get a little more fancy, we might as well combine the sax and guitar part. So at that ending part, second fret, second string, two, one, two. Now a B minor seven, but stop at the second string. Now open first string. Now second fret, first string, fourth fret, fifth string. Now 4th fret 1st string, and now an F sharp minor 7, but not the kind you're used to. It's going to be 5th fret 1st string, 4th fret 4th string, 2nd fret 3rd string. 2nd string you can leave open. So, 2, 1, 2, B minor 7, open, 2nd fret, 4, 5, and do a little, almost like a sound of rain. Just arpeggios. That's how I do it, at least. And that can be a nice way to end it. You can also just go da 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 da. Probably most of you will want to just do that instead of making it more complicated. F sharp minor seven there. Anyway, uh, let me know if you have any questions and enjoy. All right, great job, everybody. So uh, plenty to work on here. Uh, hopefully, you've enjoyed uh, learning this song. And go ahead and subscribe to MT Guitar. And looking forward to seeing you next lesson.